Hi, I'm Gail Zimmerman, and I've been searching for my father for probably, let's see, I gotta think about six years. I will be 66 in July. I am 65 years old. My name is Richard Zimmerman. 22, about to be 23. My name's Sandra Smith. I'm 20 years old. My mother died when I was five. Namik Tofano, 23 and 23 years. I did a lot of self-help programs and um, reached a point where I wanted to uh, find out more about my, um, the other half of my uh, you know, my, um, myself. I personally wasn't really searching for them, but I found out about them when I was 10. And then, like, I just wanted to know who they were, but they were actually searching for me, so they were searching for me my entire life. Basically, is how I feel, is I've been lied to my whole life with the family that I'm with. You know, like they should have told me at a younger age, like to let me understand instead of waiting till I was a teenager, basically, to tell me like, hey, yeah, you are adopted. Because like I see the differences in my, in the fan, in my skin color and everything and how I am compared and how I look compared to the rest of the family that I'm with. So I've always suspected something because I had learned it in school about genetics and stuff, right? And I didn't feel like I was, you know, I didn't feel like I looked like anyone in the family except for just having a big nose like my dad, right? So, like, it was, I, I started crying because I felt relief from um, basically just being lied to. Or f that's how I feel. As, as well as just, like, you know, I have sisters and other brothers out there that want to meet me and stuff. So, like, that's... That, that was just like really cool to me. So it was just like, it was tears of joy basically. I have no memories of him. I never met him before. Don't know anything about him. Um, never, my family didn't know him. Um, like I say, my mom um, said he was a good dancer and stuff like that. It was just, yeah, more of a friendship thing like that. So. You know, I just wanted to see where I came from and why I am kind of am the way I am a little bit. That's about it. It's just like, where did I come from? Okay, I came from you guys, cool. Now I can actually see who I am in a way, but I still just like, I don't know, kind of just don't feel like I am me. Playing frisbee with hubcaps while I was being delivered. My biggest fear now is uh, because I'm older and I waited so long that maybe he's passed away and I can't speak to him directly on anything. Um, uh, basically just like worried about what's going to happen if I met him on my own because that's how I did it. I met him on my own, didn't tell Sean or anything. Um, I didn't tell the parents that I have now, I mean. So when I met him on my own, it was him and my grandma, but I had some friends in the background with some airsoft guns just in case they wanted to do something like take me. So they were there like, you know, to protect me. If, so I was, I was kind of scared because of this, basically the stories that I was, I'm told. Some comfort in looking at my children and my grandchildren and seeing, you know, just what I had from him um, to share with them. Um, I see that his brother loved cars. That's where my kids get it, besides my husband. He loves cars. But um, they're into, you know, old cars. Um, just knowing, like again, um, knowing more about me that he has. I mean, you know, not just health, but 
you know, things he enjoys doing, um, you know, just things like that. My earliest memory of my mom would probably be when I'd go to Green America with her and we'd just go have fun on the rides. And then, like, we just have fun because we never really went out much. Yeah, their, uh, their side of the story is that my parents that I'm with now is they kept me, f kept me from them. So basically, like, there was a deal where we were supposed to see each other at least, you know, on the weekends kind of thing. But then eventually, like, that stopped. And once that stopped is basically when it went downhill with the relationship between the parents like the biological and the fosters. And then um, they just looked for me every time. And then once social media started, you know, MySpace and then Facebook and the, the Twitter and the Instagrams and stuff, when that started, it was easier for them to try and find me and get a hold of me. But when, they, when my mom and sister first got a hold of me, I thought they were just random people from like car shows that I used to go to with my foster parents. So I accepted the friend's request, and then I ended up getting a message in, the, in class one day because we had free time in class. We can do whatever we want. I got a message saying that they're, you know, this is your mom and sister, da 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 da, -da. and I, it just kind of like broke me down. I started crying a little bit. Yeah. I remember one day I was like around four, and she was so tired. She would sleep throughout the whole day. And so, like, I didn't go to school, and, like, when I did, it was, like, every now and then. But, like, the only time she was up was at night, so I didn't eat, and I would starve. <laughs> and feeling hungry all the time was not all that great. You feel weak, you feel tiny and helpless. They don't, they don't know my trigger points. So when they speak to me, it gets me easily anger, just like right away. Frustration is like, why are you talking to me like this? Kind of thing. Um, other than that, they 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 try they want they show that they want to take care of me if need. You know, every time I do go to my grandma's house on my dad's side, I get fed. You know, they they hydrate me. So yeah, they show that they want to take care living near me the entire time. Don't tell me not to do things. Um, like, you know, don't tell me how to live my life. You, you, you had your chance, you lost your chance, so don't tell me how to live my life at all, you know. Yeah, that's, basically, that's basically it. It's just mixed feelings. I'm like, I love them, you know, but just, just treat me as a person I am. You know, because I, I, I don't, I see them as my parents, I see them as family, but at the same time, I'm just like, you're just other people that I know, and that's it, you know. Um, my loyalty for them isn't gonna be the same as it is for the family I'm with now and grew up with. And so it's just like, I, I love you guys, but don't control me. I did find some information on him. I found a picture of my, um, of my father, and I found it, and, with the picture is um, me and him, and I'm in a playpen looking up at him, and he's uh, looking at me playing a guitar. And I love music, um, and my children love it now, and we've gotten into singing and things like that, so um, instruments. So um, he played a guitar, and um, he was playing music while I was in the playpen then. Um, and it excites me now when I see that. Um, I also want to say that um, I'm really excited to show my grandchildren and share with them all that, um, and whoever's listening to this, that um, there's hope out there. Don't give up. There's hope. There's a lot of learning. There's a lot of learning to be, um, you know, open for. So, yes, for sure. It's okay to give people another chance. You know, they may have done something wrong, but they've changed. So it's all right to give another chance, only if they show that they have actually changed. That living without 
both your biological parents can be difficult. I live with my stepmom, which doesn't fill a void because like she's not my biological parent. She doesn't know what I would go through. She didn't have that till much later in life, but it affects people differently at different ages. Like at a young age, I was depressed due to losing my mother. I did not want to live. So like I would let myself starve and want to feel pain in any emotion I could. Because I became depressed and the only emotion I wanted to feel was pain. And so it made it much more difficult also talking to people because like people said, oh, you exaggerate or you don't know what you're talking about. And like I went through therapy for almost 10 years to recover. It was a really hard time in life because like I felt weaker than anyone, felt like couldn't accomplish anything. Considering my mom didn't graduate high school, I felt, oh, she didn't, I'm, there's a chance I'm not gonna do it. And then now I graduated high school. I took a college class while in my senior year of high school and now plan on doing something that's different than her. Family is important, even though sometimes they can hurt you in a way, but sometimes they are so wrapped up in life, they don't know what they're doing. And there's no handbook to being a parent. So just give them time to figure it out. Girl, there's no real book to anything. It's all a learning experience. Follow me on Twitch. Toxic 420 Rick. Um, look my music up, Death's Corrosion. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got this back here too. Okay, we're good then? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to. Oh, I forgot to turn. One off. I forgot to turn this one off. Oh, it's still recording too. Oh, thank goodness, yeah. Because uh -oh. if this one stopped, then that would have been real bad. Okay. Oh, uh, wow. I don't know how to stop. Do I just. Yeah. What? That's recording. Okay, great. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hi, hello, hi, hi, hello, hello. hi. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Chaotic. How are you? <laughs> doing great, doing great, doing great. No, Mr. Thing, why are you doing this to me? Just, you can turn the fan off. It will stop once you turn the fan off. Oh, this will stop once you turn the fan mm -hmm. off? Oh. Hi, Ricky. Oh, what am I supposed to say hi now? Sorry. Take the phone. Thank you. Let's see. Wait, where's your phone? Where'd you put it? Right here. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's right next to the Sorry. microphone. Oh my god. <laughs> That's gonna be so loud. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Sorry. I just wanna make sure this is still recording. Hi. I'm sorry. Do you have to restart? No. Oh, okay. No, I would make you do that. Okay. Um. Look at me. No, look at the camera. Camera's back. <laughs> camera's not there. <laughs> sorry, I forgot to mention that. Okay. And you know what's not perfect? Mm -hmm. Me. Because guess what I did? I didn't bring mm -hmm. up the Google Docs. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Come on, Google Docs. Hurry up. We got the questions. Would you look at that? It just got loud. Come on. Kimmy. <laughs> the cat is just like, no, this is, this is a weird person. I don't like them being in here. Please keep that out. Okay, 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 okay. What are you doing? Yeah, he's sitting in the car. He drove up and I told him to leave and instead he just turned the car off. Oh, uh, can you run over to the store after you're done? Goodbye, Amy. Thank you. Have a good time. Give me no look at the camera. Camera's back. <laughs> camera's not there. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Okay.